Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In one of my previous Graxbird videos, someone in the comments had asked for a comparison. Um, I'm not sure if that meant a comparison before and after just with Graxbird or a comparison between dynamic background extraction and Pixinsight and, and Graxbird. Um, whatever the case, I decided let's do a little quick comparison of dynamic background extraction, DBE, and uh, Graxbird. So if we look at uh, my Pixinsight here, I've got a uh, luminance file of uh, M31, luminance image, M31. Uh, they're both the same. All I did was duplicate it, and I named, well, this one's named L for luminance, and I named this one Graxbird, so we knew uh, which was which. Um, let me do the dynamic background extraction first on the luminance channel, and we'll see what kind of result we get. Now, just to save some time, I went ahead and created a dynamic background extraction layout with sample points. We can see them there, scattered throughout the field of view, um, not over any of the galaxy or galaxies. And uh, this should catch the gradient which is occurring from the uh, lower right to the uh, upper left. Uh, subtraction, I'm gonna discard the background model. Maybe I won't, I'll leave the background model on. We can compare between the two. Uh, I am going to replace the target image though, and I'm just going to click the green check mark and let dynamic background extraction do its job. Okay, so it completed. I'm going to close the DBE tool. This here is the background model that was extracted from this luminance channel. I'm just going to tuck it in behind here. And here is the, I'm just going to reset the auto stretch. And there's the uh, M31 image with the uh, DBE applied to it. Let's go over to the Graxpert image. Again, same gradient that we're dealing with. But this time we're just going to go to Script, Toolbox, Graxpert. We're going to leave it on the defaults. Subtraction. Don't change the smoothing. This is often a question that comes up and I actually discussed this a little bit uh, in the previous video that I did on Graxpert. Don't change it. The AI models do a great job at smoothing. Adjusting this could actually impair the result that you're going to get. So just leave that alone. There's no need to uh, no need to play with that. I am going to show the background model so we can compare the two. And I'm just going to click the green check mark and let Graxpert go to work. So this is Graxpert AI and it's going to analyze the image for the gradients and it's going to subtract them for us. Uh, we don't have to do anything really except for click. There's no laying in sample points or anything like that. There's no no questioning what's nebulosity or, or what's galaxy in this case. Uh, the AI is going to analyze the image and do that for us and uh, give us a result. So let's just fast forward here to the end result. Okay, so Graxpert completed. This is the background model for Graxpert. I'll just move it over here. And this is the background model for dynamic background extraction. Uh, fairly similar. I think dynamic background extraction was maybe a little more aggressive. I'm not sure if that's good, though. Um, it looks to me like the Graxbird AI was a little less aggressive in the uh, removal of the background gradient. It, it looks a little... It, 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 it looks like it could be a little better to me, but it's hard to say. Um, an aggressive removal could affect other things in the image as well. So let's just uh, minimize these up out of the way. We'll keep them with their respective images. And here's a comparison of the two images then. So this is the dynamic background extraction image. And this is the Graxpert image. So the dynamic background extraction did uh, uh, work a little more aggressively. We can see it looks a little darker. Um, this, the Graxpert uh, worked equally as well, like a nice result. Um, I don't think it was quite as aggressive as the dynamic background extraction. That could be to my benefit in processing uh, down the line. Uh, maybe not, hard to say. But um, this gives you a good idea between the two. And uh, depending on your image 
and your situation. You might want to try both and experiment and see what gives you the best result. Um, I, right now, for the most part, am using Graxpert. I haven't really had any issues with it. 99.9% uh, .9 of the time it works uh, really well and I'm able to get the uh, gradient, the background gradient, removed from the image uh, rather quickly and, of course, very easily with letting the AI do the heavy lifting for me. So, uh, that is a comparison of the two and uh, if you have any questions, by all means, Leave me, uh, leave me a comment and uh, I'll see if I can get you an answer um, or if you just have an opinion that you want to throw in there about Graxpert and uh, Dynag background extraction, feel free to do that as well. Look forward to reading your comments. Uh, please note that uh, some of the questions, if you're technical on that with regards to Graxpert um, functioning, uh, I may not be able to help, but you can always reach out to the Graxpert support and uh, ask them and they can uh, certainly assist you with uh, getting things fixed if uh, you are having problems with Graxpert for some reason. Okay, thanks very much for tuning in, and don't forget to like and subscribe and all that good stuff, because like I've said before in my other video, it makes me happy, and that's a good thing. So, clear skies to you, and we'll see you soon.